How's it going everybody? My name is Eric and in this video I'm going to show you how to set up your Zebra LP2824 thermal label printer. The cheap antiquated printer that can print in 2x7 or other applications. You can print address labels, you can print name tags, you can print anything narrower than about 2.4 inches. But if you have one of these laying around or you scooped one up off of eBay or found one at a thrift store or whatever, and you wanna hook it up with your Windows computer, then this is the perfect video for you. Right, we're gonna go over how to get this thing ready for setup, then we're gonna go into the computer set it up, and then we're gonna tweak some settings. I'm gonna show you an example label, and hopefully it will solve your thermal printing problems, or at least guide you a little bit in the setup. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you haven't already, please give the video a thumbs up. And if you have any questions about the setup, shoot them down in the comments, and I will try my best to answer. But let's get into setting this thing up for installation. First things first, you're going to need your printer, your Zebra LP2824. Even though this says WS8240 on the back, it is a 2824. The next thing you're going to need is a power supply. It's gonna be the power brick that has the barrel plug and usually the power supply is used this two prong connector. It gives you input power. You need 20 volts at 2.5 amps. However, this is a 24 volt at 1.75 amps. But if you're going to order a power supply for some reason, you wanna make sure that it's marked 20 volts, at least 2.5 amps. The actual barrel size is 5.5 millimeters on the outside and then 2.5 on the inside and 12 millimeters long. This is a power supply for a LP2844 which delivers more power to the bigger printer, should work fine with this printer. And this is actually a power supply to a Dymo 400, should work fine with this printer as well. Next, you're going to need your USB type A to USB type A printer port. It looks like this. Usually they can be found at almost any thrift store or in a junk drawer at your house. If not, you can get them on Amazon for cheap. I will put a link to it in the description. Last but not least, you are going to need your label media. For this tutorial, I'm showing how to print the two x seven type shipping labels. You can use these for eBay, USPS domestic postage, or anything that integrates through Pirate Ship. This label is known as the Dymo 99019 or a 59 millimeter by 190 millimeter label. Even though it has the Dymo Punch and the Brother DK Ticks, it still will work perfectly fine in your Zebra LP2824 because this printer uses some laser mechanisms to recognize the label length. It doesn't require any type of proprietary media. And I will put a link to these labels specifically in the description as well. You're going to want to load your labels into your Zebra LP2824 printer. The surface of the label is going to be facing up because the print head is on the top of the printer. Right here is the label size locking mechanism. A mechanical switch, you flick it up in order to have it in the unlocked position. Then you flick it down to have it in the locked position. And you're going to want to leave it unlocked. Make sure the core of the labels rests tightly in the spool mechanism. And then you're going to hit the lock. You're going to switch it down, put it in the locked position. There are little feed guides that you want to thread the label through before you close it down. USB cable goes in the back right here. The power supply goes right in there. Make sure the printer is in the off position before you plug everything in. That is the circle position. And then this goes into the wall. We can turn the printer on, power switch right here, and we should get a green light. You're going to want to press the feed button to see if your printer feeds exactly one label. As you can see, mine did feed one label. But if it does not, you're going to want to calibrate it. And depending on which specific model you have, it might not be exactly how I calibrate this right here, but I will go through the two main ways of calibration. The first is the printer is on, you hold this front button, wait for two flashes and release, and it, it should go th th th, print out three labels and then a text label, and that calibrates the printer with the sensors. The way I'm gonna be calibrating this printer specifically, I have to turn it off, 
hold the front button, I'm going to turn it on, it's going to blink red, I have to release on the second red blink, and it's going to put it into calibration mode. As you can see now, it's spitting out the labels kind of slowly, reading where they start, reading where they end. It's gonna go through three blank labels. I don't know if you can see all of that. And then it's gonna print some text on the fourth one. It does waste a couple of labels, but it's how the printer calibrates in order to know what media is loaded in there. Now that we know that the printer is out of dump and it is calibrated, this is an important step. Make sure your printer is not plugged into your computer yet. We will, we will plug it in later and I will tell you when to do that. On your Windows computer, you're going to want to open up your favorite browser, Google Chrome or Microsoft Edge or Firefox, whatever. And you're going to go to, or go to, go to Google or your favorite search engine and type in Zebra LP2824 driver. And you're gonna wanna go to Seagull. They make a great driver right here. And I will put a link to this driver in the description for ease because sometimes some people have trouble finding it. So we're gonna hit download right here. It's gonna take a while. Download 54 point something megabytes, 54.6. We'll download that. Okay, once the driver is downloaded, you're going to want to navigate to your downloads folder or open it in browser. Accept the terms, hit next, next. That's fine. It's going to pop up with something saying allow changes to your device. It's not going to show this on the screen record for whatever reason. You're going to hit yes. And then we're going to install printer drivers. And this is where you're going to plug your printer in. There we go. It pulled it up immediately, LP2824, and hit next. You can share it if you want. You can rename it if you want. That's all just optionable stuff. I'm not, this is something from an older printer I have installed. We're just gonna uncheck that. I'm gonna hit finish, hit close. And then you go down here, type in printers and scanners. You should see your Zebra LP2824 installed. I have a bunch of printers installed on this computer, so please bear with me. So click on that printer. We're gonna do the settings, go to manage, printing preferences. And first thing we're gonna do is go over here to graphics and where it says dithering, we're gonna turn it to none. And that is going to give you the best barcode quality. We're gonna hit apply. And then we're gonna go to page setup. On stock, you're going to go to the drop down and look to see if you have a two by seven. I don't have one. I'm gonna to go to new. We're gonna type in two by seven and they are die cut labels, meaning that it's individual label separated by a space and then individual label. The width of this label is 2.31 inches. The height is 7.5 inches. So that is like the outside. We can leave that at 0 0.03, that's fine. That's a little bit of uh, extra paper that the thermal label does not cover. So I'm gonna hit okay, hit apply. We're gonna try to send a test page to the printer. And that lets you know that it's at least working. It does, it already knows it's in two by seven format. Everything looks good there. We're also going to print a sample label. I have one I downloaded. This is a barcode it go here change to lp24 everything looks good hit print and there is our barcode as you can see right there i have some of the personal information blanked out but look at that beautiful barcode that QR code, you're going to want to change settings in whatever platform you're gonna be using. For instance, if you're in eBay, you're gonna to go to my eBay, you're gonna to go to selling, you're gonna to go to orders, shipping labels. If you don't have an order, if you have an order, just go to that order. And from here, you're going to pick an order, pick your most recent order, print, and then go to print another label. You're gonna go down here where it says change or preview. And it, yours is gonna say eight and a half by 11 or four by six. We're gonna hit change and you're gonna change it from eight and a half by 11 to two by seven. You can open one in preview, but you're gonna to wanna to save these settings. Hit save, go back to the one that you opened in preview, go control P or file print. Make sure your LP2824 is selected. Hit print. 
That allows your sample eBay label to be printed. That's what it's gonna look like. That's another way to do a test print. If you're planning on doing this through Pirate Ship, go to PirateShip.com. Make sure you log in. You're gonna go over here to settings. You're gonna go to general settings, and then you want to go two by seven labels. Click that, and then go down and hit save. And if you don't have that option, you're gonna wanna open a chat window and ask the pirate ship employee chat person two by seven to be activated on your account and they should activate it. That allows you to use this printer with the Dymo style 99019 labels, the two by seven shipping label. Um, I will put links to that shipping label in the description if that's what you're interested in is a cheap way to print USPS domestic. There are more and more applications for this printer for like Amazon FBA. I can't show like everything in one video. So I've been just showing shipping because a lot of people want a cheap shipping. Thank you guys again so much for watching. If you haven't already, please give the video a thumbs up. And if you have any questions, throw them in the comment section and I will talk to you in the next video. Bye.